we start maybe we start now yeah so yeah basically uh, this notebook today would contain the uh, the three example we show in the slides already and also another two that uh, that is related with classification so that uh, to, to, to get an idea how, how this thing can work and uh, yeah, so I start with the first would be uh, k-means clustering. So uh, before I go into the code, I uh, so how to uh, for example uh, deal with the code because uh, because here I I try to make write them as short as possible, as compact as possible. So it may looks quite complicated. But for example, if you if you choose uh, at the random position, you can see that for example this table here start from here and end from here and it is always possible that you take a part of the code out and to 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 see what happened uh, if you if you if you run this line of code so and this is uh, this is how you for example if you are interested this is how you uh, how you how you how you how you try to figure it out and how you try to modify it uh, in the way you like and uh, yeah, I will quickly go through these steps. So for k-means clustering, the first step will be generate some fake data. So uh, what I do here is there are two steps. One is generate the points, and the second is show the points uh, in the in the scatter plot. And to generate the points, I I randomly take some center points and and as well as the points that are around these center points, so that the so that the uh, the points we have eventually would somehow has a pattern. So so the so the so the points I, so the data I generate are always two dimensional. Therefore, I can visualize it on the plane. And uh, yeah, so if you run this multiple times, you see that the data are quite different. For example, here, uh, this may be one cluster, and this may be the second. And here it's confusing. Maybe a third and fourth cluster, for example. So I generate the data in the way that the that this cluster are, are somehow obvious, so that we can see how this algorithm works. So, for example, I stop here. This will be the data I have, and then the second uh, step will be randomly generate some uh, some uh, center point for the kernels uh, for, for the for each cluster, which I called kernel here, and also. Here, I have three steps. First, I specify how many uh, uh, center points I would like to have. So now the number is three. And second will be also uh, randomly generate the uh, values and the third to show them in the scatter plot. So because here is also uh, random, so if I run multiple times, the result will be uh, different. And then, uh, so after we have these two, it's possible that the we we match each each uh, uh, data to its closest center point, and we 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 show the result based on the index of the center point. For example, here, for all the data point I have, uh, the first few points are matching to uh, cluster center three, and these are for center two, and so on and so on. So basically, I can I can do this, and with this, it's possible to to separate. The data I have into different groups so that I can uh, color them with different uh, so I, I can show them in different colors which makes uh, makes it more uh, obvious so for example this will be the result that uh, that in, on the left this part belongs to orange group and uh, on the right top will be belongs to green group and so on and after we have the after we have the center point we can uh, now, after we have this group, we can update the center uh, point based on the mean value of the group, which uh, this line uh, do this function, and then the rest lines are simply visualized it because I would want to visualize it uh, uh, together with the small dots and the and the large dots in the uh, and they are sh they are rendering in the <coughs> same color, so this code may looks a little bit long, but it, but here is just for visualizing and. The only uh, thing matter is the line here, and so if I run it, so you see that uh, that you can see the difference between these two, uh, this one and this one. That the center points are the, the location of the center point are changed, and then here is uh, the one step of uh, k-means clustering, and 
uh, basically we can we can automate it the this process by by a loop by iteration after the other so basically here i write all the code together so again i generate some random fake data and i say how many center point i want to have so now i say i want six and here i randomly generate the center point so uh, below here is a here is a plot that automatically updates so just for the uh, case of visualization and if you are interested you can open the cell to see here is the code for visualization and i simply hide it here because it's not uh, really important and then after after i have the random data i can run this iterative process i i do it uh, smaller i can run this iterate process for let's say 20 iterations and for each iteration i will pause for uh, 0 0.5 seconds so that it, it it is slow enough for us to observe how things are changed so if i run here so you see that the center points are are moving iteration by iteration and until in the end it it, it becomes stable so again if i run this another time uh, it will be another setup randomly and also if i run this clustering again then you see this how the center point moves and also you can adjust how many center point i want to have and how many data point i want to have so this will be the uh, k-means clustering and uh, the second uh, ex example would be the self-organized map we've shown on the in the in the in the slides so because implementing self-organized map is kind of uh, complicated compared with k-means so I will not explain how it is uh, implemented but in principle the idea is uh, you have a matrix that says the distance between every two center cells so that uh, based on this matrix you can update the values of it and all the code are here it's um, it's a little bit long I will not go through it so the code is actually written by Ludger I, I just take it uh, from him and 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 yeah but the but the idea is now is to 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 play with it and somehow get a, get an idea what the what this thing can do so uh, again i will go i will first uh, the first step will be generate some data so here i have an image which is already uh, uh, integrated in this notebook i extract the rgb value of this image and uh, Flatten it. Flatten means uh, means reduce the uh, means the change change. Or how to say this? Well, because the image data will be will be two dimensional, and considering each each pixel have three value, then will be three dimensional uh, uh, matrix. And flatten means that uh, I combine the first two dimensional so that it's a list of vectors. So th this kind of thing. I flatten it, and then I random choice. I randomly take one thousand samples out of this. Uh, many pixels and this will be the uh data i have i have 1000 uh, maybe i make it a little bit bigger i have 1000 so yeah so yeah so yeah to whatever you image you want to have yeah so basically here i have 1000 uh, uh dots color dots that each dots have three values rgb value and then uh here this function uh, and then the second step will be train a sum so here this function create a sum of 16 by 16 with the dimension of of vectors of 3 so i have a 16 by 16 by 3 uh, sum which means each cell of the sum has three numerical values and then i can i can show this uh, three dimensions uh, separately so that I get somehow get an idea and then in the end after the training I will show this three dimension again and to see how the values changed before and after the training so I simply run this this cell and then you see that it's actually quite fast so you see that so here this first uh, three images represent the uh, value initial initial value of the sum cells of RGB and then after the training you see that uh, the RGB value becomes something uh, like this and if, if we combine this RGB channel together to a, a colored image this will be the result we have it's this is actually the rendering that we used for our slides and then 
uh, after we have this sum, which is a, a grid of RGB values, we can actually do uh, we can asking for best matching units as well as the values contained in each best matching unit. And so we do the similar things for a new image we have. So for example, here we have this image. We, uh, we simply, we, uh, because the computational time, so we resize this image to, uh, to, to, a, very, uh, to a relative small uh, size so that we don't have this many of pixels to deal with. So again, we take the image data and then this time we, we, don't, we, we don't need to flatten it. It just, uh, we keep as it is. So it's uh, 900, uh, 192 and 200 by three matrix. And then we feed all these values to the self-organizing self map. And then the self-organizing map give us the answer, like uh, what's the most similar value of each uh, pixel we have. So the result, uh, the result will be will be the exact exactly the same size as the input data we have. So it's again 192 by 200 by 3, and then we can and then we can uh, visualize this uh, this matrix back to image again. So this will be the result we have. And if you, for example, if you change. Uh, another image here or change another image here then basically you you, you get a kind of different result and this then this is uh, this can be one example how how this algorithm works and then yes and then third uh, the, and the example for convolution uh, so again at the beginning I have one image I resize it to a Relative sm small size so that the it so that the process time is fast enough. I get the image data of it and also the size of uh, of of this image. So this dimension means the size of this image. So it's three hundred sixty six by two hundred fifty six by three. This three means RGB channel. And then uh, after we I have this uh, collection of numbers, I randomly generate. Uh, well, so here I call it kernel, which is the moving matrix of the convolution operation. So because I have, uh, because I have uh, RGB channel as input, and I, and I and then I also ha want to have RGB uh, values as the output. Therefore, the the size of this matrix will, will be, for example, seven by seven by three by three. It's kind of complicated, but the, uh, but. If you if you if you want to know the details, you can you can quickly Google it. It's it's actually quite simple. But if you if you don't care about, it, then it, it's also okay. Just know that it's uh, it's a four dimensional matrix. And then uh, the final operation will be moving this small matrix to this uh, uh, along this uh, input image so that we get something different. And because the because the matrix is randomly generated so that every time we generate a new matrix, we get some new results. For example, this will be uh, the result I have currently. And of course, you can, you can redo this matrix. And then you, uh, I don't know what I, uh, what I can do, what, can I, what I can have uh, this time. It's a very greenery. And also, I can also play with the kernel size. Let's say three, which, which is very small, which it, which means it, for each pixel, it only looks at the nine neighbors of it. This will be the new result. It's, it's a little bit dark. Yeah. So basically, you can play with this, uh, uh, with different parameters. For example, the random numbers of the kernel can be ranging from. 0 0.5 to negative 0 0.5 to positive 0 0.5 and also the result could be could be very different yeah yeah basically these are the uh, three examples we shown in the in the slides and um, the fourth example would be the hand digit recognition uh, so uh, so here for this recognition I actually use neural network it is already implemented with Mathematica so the code will actually be very simple uh, of course the beginning will still uh, 
getting the data and uh, I'm not sure if this line requires you to log in your Mathematica uh, account if if you do you just type your uh, 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 account or maybe you register one and accessing the data is free you you have a certain limitation like uh, how many data you can access per month or per day but then in principle uh, we don't need that uh, that much so uh, it, it will be free and uh, the data itself will be a collection of 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 uh, uh, mapping from one image to one number for example th this this image correspond to zero and this image cor correspond to nine and there are uh, I don't know how many there are we can say dimensions yeah there are 60,000 uh, images in total and then uh, the, the next step will be actually build a neural network I will just run this code here and quickly explain you what this means so basically uh, here we have a setup of input uh, of uh, a, in, an input of 784 uh, values and the output will be 10 values and in here I have three uh, linear layer which will be the the neural cells I, I've show you on in the slide it's it's the it's the matrix multiplication of three steps and each step it reduces the size and actually here how to design this this layer are arbitrary and and there's no general rule for it and uh, basically this is where people play with uh, different setup and try which which one works better than the other and this logistic sigma is a uh, is a function that uh, I, maybe I can quickly Google it. Uh, this would be the so logistics logistic sigma. So it's a, it's a function that maps every input to to the range of zero and one. So uh, this will be the this okay this will be uh, how this function looks like and of course there are parameters to play with but then uh, this this is the default setting like from so the input will be from negative infinity to positive infinity and the output will be from zero to one and then and we interpret in, we interpret this zero and one as a uh, probabilistic so that if the output is one which means it is, it is very likely that the uh, this image belongs to this class and if it is close to zero then it's very unlikely so this is how we interpret it, the result and so basically I have many uh, I have three uh, layers and three logistic functions as the activation function as I explained before and then I get the output of 10 numbers and I estimate what uh, uh, which is the digit represent in in this picture based on these 10 numbers and after I have this net, I simply say, I, I train this net, I train this net with the data I have. And uh, it's a very small neural network, so it trains really, really fast, even on CPU. So uh, it would take, uh, I think, less than one minute, maybe 30 seconds to finish. If I, mm -hmm. Come on. If I say 125, it's very slow. And then, of course, you can stop at, at, at any time you want. So basically, you, oh, it's already stopped. So basically, what you what you just saw was the loss function and also the prediction, uh, predict the the error rate of prediction. So what loss function is basically the difference between the output we want to have and the real output the neural network gives us. And in principle, it should be as smaller as possible. And also the a prediction rate is the same that uh, how many er how many errors the, the neural network has been made uh, on test data and after we we finish the training we can actually visualize the result how like how good the neural network did the prediction so for example here I randomly take 500 uh, images from the data set and uh, I, I I colored the prediction into blue and red so if it is blue it means the prediction is correct and if it is red then it's wrong so basically from this result you somehow get an idea how this neural network 
uh, if it works well or not. And and now of course uh, you can play with the setup here so that you have more layer or less layer and to see what's the effect. And in principle, uh, in principle, uh, you have more. The more layer you have, the better result you can get. But also it depends on, for example, how many iterations you train and how many data you can have. And uh, and then uh, yeah, this will be the story of this. This is a very classic uh, example of machine learning and. Um, Many people use this as the benchmark to test how how good their model is, and uh, the last two uh, results are, are are more are less are less complicated than the and the previous. So basically, they are the classification of different images, and uh, what what these two example uh, use is a mathematical function called classify. So basically, this function do the classification task by the by the input data we give, and because uh, because it 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 integrates many different methods and also some technical tricks, so that for example we don't have to so so that it it can benefit from some other uh, models that already been trained on many many data, so that we don't have to bother to bring that many training data by ourselves so that uh, we but still we can get a very good result so basically uh, there are many technical details that are already being handled by this function and uh, it's very easy to use but i think from the previous examples somehow you get a, you get an idea how classification really works so for example here will be the legendary creatures we we want to. We want the machine to learn. For example, we have uh, we have dragon, we have unicorn. That also the different type of picture of these creatures, and then we 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 t we uh, we format the data in in the way that uh, that each picture has its labeled, and then we say that this is our training data, and then we feed our training data to this classify function. It will process this data and to extract some numerical representations out of it, and then use this numerical representation to build a classification model that uh, are able to tell what uh, what this image is about. So, because we have actually uh, we don't have many uh, images, so the training process is uh, is actually very fast. And then at the end, if we bring some new image. That are not uh, shown in the uh, training data. We can we can ask what they are. Ooh, actually this time the result is not so good. So basically, three result three the first three image gives same output. Let's do this again. That's bad. Yeah, but. But of course, uh, this machine learning never, never guarantee that they work perfect. Oh, okay, bad. But I mean, this is the case that then usually when this happens, then you have to play with the parameters or play with the, uh, play with the data you have, and yeah. And uh, and then the last uh, example would be the similar setup with the previous one, but uh, the data, uh, but we benefit. From um, mathematical mathematical uh, um, service that the, it actually crawls data from from search engine. So so here uh, we uh, for example we say that we want to have images of light pole, of garbage bins, of trees, and of benches, and each uh, each class I want twenty images. So basically I run this code. So the core of this. Uh, Code will be this web image search. So you can you can select this uh, uh, function and then click this oh, click this uh, come on click this item so that you you see uh, what this function is about. So basically, uh, this is the function we use. And where does that thing go? A color. How do I go back? Um, I'm not a user of Mac. Uh, just press Mathematica. Okay. Ah, okay. Perfect. 
sorry. So, so for example, basically after I run this, I can, I can see what uh, what the result would be. For example, this, uh, these are the twenty images, Mathematica collected, uh, for me from the search engine, and of course I can, I can change uh, the text here so that the the image will be different, and it depends on what uh, questions we are interested. So. And uh, here, here actually is the same result. I, I simply keep the previous downloads uh, in this notebook just in case that I don't have internet access. But since I already have them, I just don't run this code. And yeah, and also, for example, uh, if I type images, I will get this result, right? And then I can select this uh, output cell and say uh, the the style instead of the style will be output i say it will be input and then this is the way how you uh, how you how you integrate these images into this notebook just in case for example you find something interesting and you don't want to lose it and you want to reuse it as well and then so after the, after i have these uh, images i similarly did the same i have similar to the same thing to uh, call the function classify and try to build a classifier to classify these images. It's very fast. I'm really I'm very worried about the quality. Okay. So the quality is really bad actually. So yeah, at, after the training I I I have let's say one, two, three, four. I have five random image taken from the from the internet again, and uh, here will be the result. So for the first image, the machine tells me that it should be a light pole of uh, basically probabilistic of one. And the second will be three. This will be perfect. And the third is well, it says that it's it's. 87 percentage of being a tree rather than to being a garbage bin which which is wrong <laughs> and the fourth yeah it's a bench it's it's okay and the fifth is okay fifth fifth it is struggling between the light pole and the tree which somehow is true yeah so basically <laughs> this is the idea of this uh of these examples and you can you can you can you can play with play with them by by changing the uh, keywords here or by by changing the number of pictures here and also if you are interested you can you can uh, well look at the code step by step like uh, what what if what does each function do here so that you you can somehow get an idea and uh, yeah that will be pretty much for today and uh, if you have any questions or yeah for example i can change uh 150 i can change for example i want tiger here and i want cat dog and uh, i don't know a lion and also each image gives me uh, each category gives me uh, 20 images and because the download is really fast so i i, I simply download them all mm. okay and then I say images, it will be a collection of these. It's very, it's very cool. I can, I can then train this classifier again. And when it is training, I will go to the internet to search for some random pictures. Let's say a cat. Yeah. I just take, I don't know, maybe this one. So I say copy, uh, copy image, and uh, 
Is it is the training? Yeah, the training is already done, so I can say, uh, I can type here urban elements, well, which is the name I I didn't change, and I can simply paste the image here, and to see, it's a cat. That's good. And what happened of these guys? So that's quite. So you see that the the machines are, yes, yes are sometimes quite stupid. Uh, I will use the size of it. So I ha I still have these five images and the machine said, okay, the first will be dog, the second will be cat, the third will be cat, the fourth will be dog, and the fifth will be dog, which is <laughs> nonsense. Okay, so this is, this, this is it, this is for today. Thank you.